Welcome everybody. Whether you're joining us online or whether you're here in the room, if we haven't met before, I'm the Reverend Graham Anson. I'm the Minister here at Coromel Uniting and I welcome you here into this time and into this space. Do you need me to step a little closer to the microphone? If so, I'm ready to go. <laughs> does anybody know? Anybody? Does, any, does anybody know why there might be a... Uh, what, what is it? Like a little stand here this morning? Because we have a special guest. Be Pardon, pardon, pardon. We have a special guest. We've got special. Well, probably, yes. A lot of people are going to be leading this morning, <laughs> who, who will uh, probably need the stand. So, fantastic! It's our uh, it's our celebration service with our children and youth. So, uh, great to have everybody with us this morning. We've got a special book for you today, um, which will be fun. I hope. Well, not fun. It's a great little book, a Christmas book, and uh, and we've got a lot of involvement from our children and our youth. So let's come together in worship. We're in the season of Advent and over the last three weeks we have, um, three, two, two weeks ago we, had, uh, we were talking about the idea of being awake to hope. Last week we were talking about being prepared for peace. So hope, peace, today the theme is jumping for joy. So there will, should be a little bit of joy in the room. Having said all that, I know there are times in the season of a church and in the lives of people where joy is a long, long way away. And so I don't really want to jump for joy today because um, I know it's a bit tough. And today's a tough day. Well, this week's been a tough week. And Janice, we want to acknowledge that this is a tough week for you. Um, and as we talk about joy, I, I do want us to just take a moment in memory and giving thanks for, the, for Brian's life. Um, so let's, I'm just going to give you a moment to think about where Brian's been special in your journey, because I know he's a really important um, part of our church. And uh, so I, I, just in silence, I just want you to take a moment and give thanks yourself to God for Brian's life and where he's been. Just take a moment or two to remember some things where Brian's been with you in your journey here. We will be gathering to, uh, to remember and to celebrate Brian's life on the 20th of December, Tuesday the 20th, here in, in this chapel space. So there's an invitation for you all to come and we'll, we'll be more further details um, closer to time. Um, come, let's, um, let's, let's worship. We're going to start with acknowledgement of country. Thank you. And as we do each week, we're going to light, well, as we've been doing in Advent, we're going to light our Advent candles.
um, wrench in the front, the other, the other one at the front. As a sign of the light of Christ who is coming into the world. In Christ there is life and light for all people. Friends, thank you. Today is a, you can go back to your seats. The, the, today is about joy. So let's stand together and sing joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive its King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature and sing. Heaven and, nature and sing. heaven and nature sing. And nature and sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Saviour. Let us our songs employ While fields and streams, rocks, hills and plains Repeat the sounding repeat joy, the sounding repeat, joy. The sounding repeat the sounding joy Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy He rules the world with truth and grace And makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his and wonders love, of his and love, wonders of his and love, wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. You may be seated. Let's come to God in prayer. God of timeless grace, in this time of Advent, we come with joyful expectation. We acknowledge all of our doubts and uncertainty and all of our life experience that muddies our belief in your simple message of love. Lord, we lay it all bare in front of you. Instead, Lord, make us ready for your message, lived out right in front of us in Jesus. The message of hope, peace, joy and love. This simple message that prepares the way, that makes rough paths smooth. Work in our hearts, Lord, so that we might be found to be people who are believing in that life-giving message. Lord, we eagerly await the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Lord, grow that in us. Lord, bring it through us. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isabel is going to bring the peace. Thank you. May our Lord of hope fill you with great joy and peace so that joy might abound in you by the power of the Holy Spirit. This of Advent, may the, the peace of Lord be with you. And also with you. I'm going to invite you to stand if you're able and pass the peace with those around you in the way that we have been doing. When John heard in person that the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are ye the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and lame walk, their leopards are cleansed and the deaf, deaf heard hear, the dead are raised and the poor have good news brought to them and blessed in is anyone who takes no offence at me. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country when she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and a holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He shows strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful th from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And, to Mer and Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. For the word for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, we give thanks. Well, I said I was going to bring a book today, and I thought I am going to bring a book. I'm happy for everyone to stay seated where they are. But I am going to ask some questions, so uh, just keep stay paying attention, everybody, and uh, and let's uh, let's enjoy this book. It's called Tea and Sugar Christmas. Now, the story is about a young girl who lives in a remote community, in a really remote community. She lives a long, long way away from lots and lots of people. She lives a long, long way 
away from anybody really, just in her small community, on a place called the Nullarbor Train. Oh, did you catch it, Kate? <laughs> so she, li she lives on a remote community out on the, who knows where the Nullarbor Plain is? Okay, we've got quite a few hands up. Okay, so the Nullarbor Plain is in Australia and it's between Adelaide and Perth. It's right out there and it's really, really long. Really, really big. Who's ever driven across the Nullarbor Plain? We've got a few. Yeah, long drive, isn't it? I've never done it, but uh, it's a long drive. And this young girl, whose name's um, Kathleen, uh, lives in, in, she lives on the railway line. And once a week, imagine this, if once a week a train, it, it, this story is set in the 1930s. That's a long, 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 long time ago. I won't ask if anyone was born in the 1930s because David was born in the 1930s. Thank you, David, for admitting that. Well, not admitting, you should be proud of it, actually. What am I saying? It's great to have people born in the 1930s in our room. And you'd remember, yeah, I know Betty as well and, and John, there's a number of hands going up. And Roger too. There you go. There's a lot of people born in the 1930s. My mum and dad were born in the 1930s. So life was very different in the 1930s. And if you lived on a remote, if you lived way out on the desert, imagine not being able to go to the shop. Imagine not being able to just go down to Woolies for, uh, you know, for, for, for an ice cream or, you know, for that, that'd be my, but, you know, imagine not being able to go to places. Well, that's what life was like. And once a week, once a week, a train used to come into town and it was called the tea and sugar train. And it used to go all the way across the desert. And on the train would be a nurse. They had a butcher. They eventually they grew it to be, um, they had a butcher. They had, um, they had a community nurse. They had all these sort of things that travelled on the train to service all the people who lived in these places right out west. And that's what this story is about, sort of. I just want to add one more thing. Once a year, the tea and sugar train became the Christmas train. And that's what we're going to read about today. The tea and sugar Christmas. Kathleen peered into the sugar jar. There wasn't a single grain left. She would have to go without until Thursday. Where's the tea? called Dad. There's none left. Oh, I can't do a mum voice, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's none left, said... <laughs> I won't do voices, all right? There's none left, said Mum. You'll have to wait until Thursday. Kathleen smiled at Dad. You'd better buy a bigger packet next time. We'll stock up on everything, winked Dad, especially things for Christmas. The tea and sugar train only came once a week on Thursday, but the special Christmas train only came once a year. Today was Sunday. Four more days without sugar. Four more days until the Christmas train. Please, please be on time. Please don't be late. Just something I mentioned, meant to mention at the start. This is a book by Jane Jolly and Robert Inkpen and it's published by NNA, NLA Publishing. Kathleen couldn't wait. She ran outside and scrambled up the hill face at the back of the house. She held her breath and listened. Only a cicada answered. Who knows how, what a cicada sounds like? Yeah, we all do, don't we? Yeah, cricka, cricka, cricka. Sounds like my tinnitus, actually. That's what it sounds exactly like. <laughs> the next few days dragged. The heat rolled in from the desert and hung heavily entering the house at every door and window crack. They lived out in the desert, so it was really, really hot and dry. On Thursday in the afternoon, Kathleen climbed the stony-faced hill again. She sat staring out across the empty desert. The air was still and breathless. In the distance, she could see the glistening railway tracks heading into the siding. She listened intently. She could see a light. Yes, there it was again, making its way through the salt bush. 
It was coming. Ever so slowly, the train clacked along the tracks towards them, towards town. Kathleen slid down the hill and ran through the drowsy town. She burst inside. It's coming, it's coming, she shouted. Dad looked up and his eyes danced a jig. Now what might be coming, girlie-o? You know, Dad, come on, let's go. At last, more tea and sugar, said Mum, from the end of the paper chain, from, of a paper chain. Kathleen grabbed the wheelbarrow and started running with it. Her feet pounded the hot track, searing like scones on a griddle. She could hear, you have to ask, people, ask your parents what a griddle is, or maybe your grandparents. She could hear the screeching of the train as it pulled into the siding. As she ran, others came from their, from their houses, cheering and calling out across the town. When she reached the siding where the train was, Kathleen stopped. The smell of hot oil and metal filled the air. Dad and Mum eventually caught up. A Christmas tree which had been decorated by the children on the line stood wilting in the heat. Clinks and clunks filled their ears as the train drew to a stop. Who's ever heard a steam train coming to a stop? Oh, the clinking noise, yes. Anyone, get, anyone heard the, the picnic train that goes through with its whistle? Yes, goes through here. Guards jumped up and down from the carriages, looking important. Everyone waited. Kathleen left the wheelbarrow and edged forward. Her eyes widened. The guards sauntered along the track. Kathleen held her breath. The guard reached up and pulled on the carriage door, and at first it stuck. Then he pulled harder and it opened. Kathleen screamed with delight as she saw him. Who do you think might be on the other side of the door? Oh, we don't know yet. Oh, yes, we do. There he is. Father Christmas. His beard was blinding. His, eye, his clothes were so Christmas red. Just like all the pictures she had ever seen of him. And here he was, real, here in the middle of her desert. The guards pushed a set of steps in front of the carriage and one by one, eager children climbed them and told Father Christmas their wishes. Clutching their presents, they were carefully lifted back down. It was Kathleen's turn. She had waited for this moment for so long. She had dreamt of it. And now she stood before him. Her heart drummed against her chest. Father Christmas's eyes crinkled and smiled. And what would you like for Christmas, little girl? Oh, sorry, I will do a Santa voice. <laughs> and what would you like for Christmas, little girl? He chuckled. Kathleen tried to speak. She stared into his eyes. There must be something you'd like, he urged. She licked her lips and whispered, a present, please. His loud ho, ho, ho made her jump. Father Christmas placed a parcel in her hand. Merry Christmas, little girl. As Dad lifted her down, her eyes didn't leave the big bright man in red. Kathleen sat in the shade and carefully opened the package. She squealed when she saw the book. Her eyes didn't leave the pages as she flicked excitedly through. When the shopping was done, the carriage doors shut with a clang. The train blew its harsh whistle and left. 
Kathleen stood next to the track, clutching her book inside. It was all over. She watched as the train pulled away, metal on metal, it screeched out of town and disappeared into the distance. At home, Mum put the kettle on for a cuppa. Dad waved the packet of tea. Kathleen looked for the sugar. There was nothing. In all the excitement, they had forgotten to buy sugar. No worry, said Dad, it's Christmas. And he picked Kathleen up and spun her around the kitchen. There's just a couple of photos there, Kyle. I just wanted to, yeah, there's one, of a real photo of, uh, of Father Christmas with the kids on the track. And then another one with some of the pictures of, that go with it, yes. The train stopped running, um, and there's some of the things you could buy. The train stopped running a number of years ago, a long, long time ago. It stopped running in the 1990s, so um, such a long time ago. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I wonder, I've got a question for anyone who wants to answer. What do you look forward to at Christmas time? What do you look forward to at Christmas time? I especially want to hear answers from people under the age of about 16. <laughs> what do you look forward to at Christmas time? Some peace and quiet. Some peace and quiet. <laughs> yes, hi Corey, how are you? Good to have you. This is Corey. Hi Corey, great to have you with us. Peace and quiet, yes. What about you, Isabella? You want to say, you got one? Friends and family and family members. Yeah, that's a good part of Christmas too. What do other people look forward to at Christmas time? What do you get excited about? Friends and family. Yeah, all right, good. Well, each Christmas in the church, we celebrate, we remember and we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And there's a little bit of excitement that comes for us for that, with that, hopefully, of this idea of God being with us. Each year we get to remember Emmanuel, God with us. That's what we're celebrating each year, God with us. God who comes in the form of a human being to show us the way. And at Christmas time in particular, we remember that way that way of hope, peace, joy and love. The way that brings life. Life abundant and life everlasting. Friends, if I don't get to see, I know a few people are going away fairly soon. <laughs> I know a few people are going away fairly soon, so if I don't get to see you again, have a great Christmas. And if I do get to see you, that'd be great. But I hope this year you have a great Christmas and that we all remember God with us, showing us the way, the way of hope, peace, joy and love. All right, well, I'm just trying to see where I'm up to. Kyle, where am I up to? I <laughs> I've got lost on the train. <laughs> We're going to sing. We're going to sing Away in a Manger. Let's all stand together and sing Away in a Manger. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus, I ask you to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in your tender care and fit us for heaven to Seated. I'm going to hand over now to Judy for our presentations. Thank you, Judy. Yeah, sure. Good morning, everybody, and special welcome to all the children over here. We've had an interesting year in jam this year. Um, no, down. Yeah, down. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we've had, you know, numbers are low, but we still have fun, and I've certainly been challenged. So, <laughs> <laughs> with some of the questions that I get, yeah, <laughs> these kids are too bright for me. Anyway, we'll start with the little ones first. I think uh, Judy's starting a degree in astrophysics, is that right? <laughs> I, I have some of the questions, and starts her master's in theology next yeah. week, is that right? Do you know? Do you want to come up? I've got a present, I've got a prize, present, gift. This is for you. That's all right. Thank you. Wait a sec. Look, look at Dad. Let's have a look at Dad. Great. There we go. Kyobi. <laughs> Hello. This is for you. Oh, Oops. Right. That's for you. Let's look at Dad. Look at Dad. Let's, let's, let's look at Dad. <laughs> Zara. I've seen Zara there somewhere. Hello, Zara. How are you? This is for you. Do you, Thank want, to you. Wait? Do you want to wait for your little sister? Paintant. Oh, there we go. Cool. Do you want to, do you want to take paintant as well? Thank you. <laughs> Clover. This must be the last. Clover. I'll come around this side. Yeah. This is for you. Here you go. Now the challenging children. Rebecca. <laughs> Hello, Rebecca. Yeah, that's for you. Aurora. That's all right. <laughs> I think Mum wants to take a photo. How about we turn and look at Mum? Let's look at Mum. There we go. Isabel. Isabel. There you go. That's all right. Thank you. And Ash. Who's Ash? There he is. <laughs> yeah, Ash. Now, look at Mum. I've got a special present for somebody today. This is for Ash. Ash, do you want to come back up again? Ooh. He was the most consistent attender at JAM oh, there this you go. year. Yay. <laughs> and he came even despite his mother and father. Well, no, it certainly, maybe his sister didn't turn up at the same time. Came as well. There so we go. He was very oh, dedicated. <laughs> there we go. Do you know what that means? Do you know, do you know what Judy's saying? You came more you often came than the, anyone else. You came the most times this year. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you everybody and thank you all to the um, other parents and helpers that I've had over the year assisting me with the children because as you know we've always got to have the two adults in the room and also to Amanda and to Rachel uh, that were also assisting in the process of um, helping us particularly with the crafts and things that we have. So thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes. 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 Kim. 
so I get the great job of recognising the young people in our church. We don't unfortunately have um, a youth program at the moment, but we still like to acknowledge them for all that they do. Um, and, that, and like Judy said, Amanda and Rachel help with jam. Um, we have Kyle and Aaron that do technology, and we have lots of other people that pop in and help out at events and things like that. So, um, Kyle, we would love to give you a Christmas gift. Come on, Kyle. No, come, come on, on Kyle. Kyle. Come on. Apparently, Notice uh, I picked him first. Apparently, <laughs> last, apparently last time when I thought Kyle was on view, where actually you had words in front of you. So if all of you are, who are watching, this is Kyle. Once again, yeah, well done. Thank you. Lucas. Uh, there he is. Yes. And you can give one to your sister too for us. So thank you very much. And we have Amanda. Come on up, Amanda. <laughs> and the others I will distribute during the week. So, thank you. Well, let me just say, and um, it's, it's, a real privilege to be amongst our children and our, our young people. Uh, it, it's, great to have, it's great to be church together, all of us together. It's great to be part of a community where we value um, being together, all of us. So um, it's a really, we, we should be celebrating our, our children and our youth. And, uh, and I think we are in our own kind of way. Celebration is one of our values. And, uh, and we want to thank all of you who, who come and, and help make our lives richer um, all together. Um, so thank you so much. Thanks for, for, for being part of who we are. Um, next year, we've got a little bit of a plan for running something on a fairly regular basis for, for our young families together um, and youth and young adults. And, and our, our hope is that we, we will continue to gain life by doing that together. I might, um, I might just say a, uh, a brief, I'll have it lead us in a brief prayer. Is that okay? Loving God, we know that, um, that you valued kids. Uh, we know that there are stories of Jesus blessing children. So Lord, we bless our kids. We bless our young adults. We bless our youth. Lord, we pray for your blessing on them this Christmas, this coming year, in all that they are, Lord, bless them. Might they know your love, your courage and your strength in all of their lives. Lord, that might they, they know your presence with them through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing. Anybody who knows me at all knows that I am a fan of Australian Christmas carols. And this one is one that I remember from my time at school. And you may remember it. And just a reminder that the word Orana in, an, in Aboriginal language means welcome. Welcome to Christmas Day. Carol of the Birds. Let's stand together and sing. Out on the plains, the brokers are dancing, lifting their feet like horses prancing. Up to the sun, the woodlarks go winging. Faint in the dawn light echoes their singing. Orana, Orana. Christmas Day. Down where the tree ferns grow by the river, there where the waters sparkle and quiver, deep in the gullies, bellbirds are chiming, softly and sweetly, their lyric notes rhyming. Orana, Orana, Orana to Christmas. 
first day. Friar bird sip the nectar of flowers, Cara Wong's chant in wattle tree bowers, in the blue ranges, lorikeets calling, carols of bush birds rising and falling. Children are, uh, are leaving to go and start the party early, so uh, we'll join you soon. Isabel's online. Isabella's online. I just want to say hello, Isabella. She's uh, saying hello and amen to the blessing of the children, I presume. Um, yes, thank you, Isabel. Great to have you with us. Look, I'll be honest, I, I really thought by now it'd be about 29 past 10 and I'd only have to give about a one minute homily. So uh, we're running early and, uh, and I don't have a lot on the page. So uh, I'm seeing a lot of really smiling faces about that. Um, I won't go too long, I promise. I just, look, I just want to say this and I want to lean into what I said in my little note for News and Notes this week. Joy is a little hard to find in our world and joy is a little, it's, a, it's an interesting topic to hit at Christmas time. Because for a lot of, I know a lot of people who struggle at Christmas time because they've had a lot of loss around this time. And it's hard to associate joy with loss. It's hard to associate joy with, with rising interest rates, job uncertainty. It's hard to associate um, joy with war in our world. It's hard to say, let's be joyful when... Um, uh, when in, even in our own nation we have such a great divide that continues to grow between, in so many different, different ways, between the haves and the have-nots, um, between people who are First Nations people and, and people who have come later. Um, it, it, it's hard, you know, like when, when this whole stuff around which we've learned through the pandemic around what's truth and fact and research and what's truth and fact and research and the, and the battleground that that became and still is at many times. It's very hard to be joyful when our, the, the generation, generations below us have watched housing affordability become something that they'll never get to. When job security is lost to the benefit of the employer. It's hard to be joyful, a little hard to be joyful. And for some of us, there'll be other reasons why being a little, naming joy at this time of the year is a little difficult. I get that. I don't really count myself of a joyful person. I, I went on a, a min, a, the presbytery retreat um, with other ministers from the presbytery about three or four weeks ago, and our theme was having permission for joy or something. I can't remember the name of the theme, but I found it a difficult theme to get into. I got there eventually because I think like you, I'm presuming, joy is a, a bit like humility. The, soon, the moment you chase it, you've kind of lost it. <laughs> or it's a bit like, there's a lot of things, that, like, like there are, there's some parts of the, the Christian faith, the Christian walk, that are easier to name and to find actions around. But joy is different. Joy finds us. We don't find, we don't go, once you start looking for joy, you kind of lose, you're going to lose it. If you do things to get joy, to get happiness, to, you know, like, like if, if, you're, if that's the goal, you're going to lose it. A lot of people are living with this, um, um, I mean, I've got a mate of mine, I play golf with every Friday and, and you know, he, our world isn't heading towards joy. It's heading towards fear, anxiety and concern. And his words to me are, sadly, it's good for business. He's a psychologist. Did I say that? Yeah. He's a psychologist. He says, sadly, it's good for business. Um, 
you know, there's a lot of people also, I mean, I don't know, live with this sense that this isn't how it's meant to be. Life isn't, wasn't meant to work out this way. That's part of the story we pick up in John the Baptist this morning. I know it was read a, a quite a while ago now, but it's part of the story we pick up of John the Baptist. He's in prison. He's hoping like everybody else for the Messiah. And here he, he is in prison facing death. And he's saying, is Jesus really the one? And he sends his disciples to go and see Jesus to try and find out. And I think many of us, if you're being honest, probably go through patches of our Christian faith where we say, is this really the way? Why am I wasting my time being generous or grateful or compassionate or kind when the rest of the world seems to want to go a different way? Why do I have to be the one that swims against the stream? It's hard work. It's hard to find balance. It's very hard to find contentment and joy. You've got to be kidding me. Here come the words of Mary from the Magnificat. She's able to speak, to rejoice with her cousin Elizabeth. And it hasn't come from a wild ride at a water park or winning the lottery or finding the man of her dreams. Her joy comes from a different place. Her joy comes when she's prepared to see God at work. In the midst of all the struggle, in the midst of the disappointment, in the midst of the hardship, Mary's joy, she can name it when she can see the good that God is doing. That's a hard thing to do sometimes, I get that. It goes against the human grain. But joy creeps up on her perhaps. Joy finds her and comes out of her in a fullness of spirit. When she's able to see God acting. When she's able to see life in the midst of life perishing. When she's able to see the good that God is doing for those for whom life is a struggle. It's the same with Jesus in his response to John the Baptist. The deaf shall hear, the lame shall walk, the blind shall see. For Mary, it's that the rich go hungry, the hungry get fed. You know, like, like there's all these kind of ways in which the goodness of God is seen. So that's my encouragement to you this Christmas, this Advent, in this preparation for Christmas, is turn your eyes on where God is doing good, either around you or maybe even through you. Be awake to it. Be aware of the little conversations you're having with others where words of hope or peace or love lead to joy. Give thanks. That's countercultural. We live in a society that loves to grumble. Give praise. That's countercultural because we live in a society that, that says there's nothing beyond the roof. The promise that comes to us from Scripture is that when we're prepared to give thanks and give praise, the three in one God will meet us. Somewhere in that space, I can't tell you exactly where or how, it works differently in each of our hearts, but God will meet us. And somewhere in there, joy will catch up with you. And you, my friends, will be a walking message of hope to the world.
I expect I'm going to see quite a few of you before Christmas. I know some of you are heading off very soon. But I just want to say, this Christmas as we go, it's always, this is a simple message that comes to us each Christmas. Of being awake to hope and letting that be our voice. Being prepared for peace. And being, to letting our lives be, be a, a place of peace for others. And friends, today it's about being, a, being pre, well not jump, if, if jumping for joy isn't your thing, at least being awake enough to give thanks and praise so that joy might catch up with you. Amen. Brad's going to bring our announcements. Thank you, Brad. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, greetings from the councils of our church. And uh, welcome to those who are uh, connecting with us, not just today, but throughout the week, uh, with our service being recorded for us. Uh, a new sheet has uh, been produced, and uh, I note here a, a little message from our uh, year-long hard-working elf, uh, Wayne, that um, items for news and notes uh, need to be uh, into his um, hands by uh, the Thursday of uh, the 22nd of December um, because Christmas Day will be the last published uh, edition for this year and uh, that will be the last one until close to the end of January. So uh, if groups want to get some information into our new sheet, let Wayne know through the published uh, connections uh, so that it can be printed into our, uh, our mega edition during the holiday period. Uh, the planning for our Christmas Day lunch uh, has started, so um, those people who want to come and join in, uh, Graham and uh, Mark Burns in our office are very keen to hear from those people now and also from others who uh, are interested and available in, in helping. Um, so there's information to go in there that is in user notes to help out. Uh, but now's the time to, to book a, um, a seat mm. to be able to be a part of that activity. Um, there are a few other things. There's also some celebration uh, re reports at the end there on our uh, congregational Christmas dinner and the time out Christmas party and the uh, finishing up craft workshop for the year. So uh, those groups have, uh, have had a great time rounding up their uh, celebrations. And uh, so there's our, our main items to mention in the new sheet. Uh, I've been asked to put in another one with a little group that uh, we have some affiliation with. This is the Wollongong Welsh Choir. They have a Christmas concert and it's right here in this space on uh, Sunday the 18th of December at two o'clock. And... Uh, $20 um, old-fashioned money uh, at the door um, if people would like to take part. And uh, I'm told uh, they have some notoriety now because a member of the Welsh Choir uh, uh, had connections with uh, Wales itself and apparently they got picked up by, uh, by Welsh Radio oh. in, uh, in the UK. So uh, a little bit of Wollongong was... Uh, Broadcast in uh, in Wales, so uh, and given it's in Welsh, do you have to wear face shields for the? Is that? Sorry, I thought apparently not. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, all right, okay. I thought that was fun. <laughs> so, on that note, I'm going to hand over to our prayers. Here we go. Good morning, everyone. In Philippians four, verse six, we are told. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So won't you please join with, with me now as we do this. Dear God, as we come to you in prayer, we ask you to help us set aside the worries and concerns of life so that we can find renewal and peace in your presence. 
We pray for strength for the weary, help for the needy, and healing to those who are broken in body, mind or spirit. We especially think of our sister in Christ, Janice, as she is in a time of sadness and loss, not forgetting everyone who knew and loved Brian. Today, Lord, we've been celebrating the young people in our church family. We thank you for them, for their youthful excitement and for their parents who faithfully bring them along and especially for Judy and her helpers for their commitment to bring the stories of Jesus to these children. We give you thanks, Lord, for all our groups, for all the wonderful contacts that have been made through them this year. We thank you for the volunteers you have provided us with to keep these groups operating. We pray for the leaders and committees of these groups as they seek to serve you. Mm. And we pray for all members as they now look forward to a break over Christmas and into the new year. Dear Lord, we pray for the work of Christian organisations around the world. Many of these groups share your love with compassion and care, helping people to survive the physical, emotional and spiritual struggles they experience from day to day, especially when they are in crisis from natural and man-made disasters. We especially think of those groups who are serving in Ukraine, seeking to bring comfort and healing to those who have been so badly affected by the war ravaging their country, destroying their homes, schools, churches, businesses and their families. Help us, Lord, to make it a priority to share our love by giving generously to aid this vital work. And we pray for the workers who give up their comfortable lives to go out into the field to do this work and to share the love of Jesus they have in their own hearts. Graham has spoken to us this morning about the baby jumping in his mother's womb as Mary and Elizabeth celebrated the coming births of their babies. And Mary honoured you in the words of the Magnificat. She rejoices in you and lists many of the wonderful things you do for those who are struggling and then remembers your promises. Lord, I pray for us as your people that we will celebrate who you are. We will want to jump and leap for joy. Even though it may be impossible physically, hmm. we can jump for joy in our hearts. Help us to be people who remember just who you are and how many great things you have done for us. It is so easy for us to become burdened by the trials of life and forget that you are there, hearing us when we pray. Make us a group of people who worship you with joyful hearts. Mm. It has been a busy year for many of us, but Lord, we thank you that every Sunday we can come along to our church to meet with each other, to worship you, to share over morning tea or participate online. Thank you that we can be renewed and refreshed as we hear and sing lovely music, join in the prayers, listen to Bible readings and homilies that open up your word to us. Thank you that we can come to church or share online and know that you are present with us. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers and we thank you for the answers we will receive. Mm. Through the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sandra. Let's stand together and sing. Hark the herald angels sing. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic hosts proclaim, 
Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord, late in time behold Him. standing if we're able there will be a retiring offering as we leave from here today lord god we pray in thanks for your goodness in our lives we pray for your goodness in all of the earth and lord we pray that we might continue to be part of your good work through the offerings we bring of our money our time our gifts our lives might these be used for your glory in all of the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, be joyful in hope. Pain, patient in affliction. Faithful in prayer. When you face trials, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. May your lives overflow with hope and joy and bear witness, fullness in the fruits of the Spirit of love, joy and peace. Go, giving thanks to God who will always lead you towards light and life. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.